Hey everyone, welcome in to a, another daily editorial here on the KE Report. We're chatting with Jordan Royburn, founder and editor of The Daily Gold. And Jordan, we're going to be focusing on the precious metals because, hey, there's a lot to talk about in terms of mostly the charts. And I do want to focus a bit more technically on this because, well, gold did close last month, February, over 1900. It was 70 cents over 1900. But the follow through on March 1st, just yesterday, well, that moved gold quite a bit higher. And then, of course, as we see in the gold sector, we're seeing a bit of a pullback today down about $26. But gold is holding right around 1920, let's call it. You look at the short term chart, and that's where we're going to start. You have a gap in the chart from the move just on yesterday, March 1st. It's being back tested a little bit, but has not been fully filled because of the fact that gold is still holding around 1920. Jordan, short term, what do you look for when you see these sort of gaps being put in, in a market that has been trending higher, especially the month of February? Well, hey, Corey, what we really want to look for, especially after yesterday, is we want to see the low of yesterday or the open level. We want to see that hold. We don't want to see it filled. And so, you know, if you're looking at gold, silver, depending on what platform you're looking at, the you know there might be a gap there they might not you know because you have trading in europe and asia before the us so i mean i guess with gold and silver you can focus on uh, where they opened yesterday with the stocks it's more obvious you know with gdx gdxj the silver etfs but i mean just talking about that gap yesterday that should be a breakaway gap or a runaway gap the two are similar runaway just happens later in a move of breakaway tends to be earlier. But I was thinking yesterday, this, these are breakaway gaps because the market opened up higher with this gap. And after the open, the market exploded, made a huge gain, you know, wh- whether you're looking at the stocks or the metals, and then it closed at the high of the day. And so in, with respect to gold, given the significance of 1900, that to me, these should all be breakaway gaps. Now, unless they get filled in the next couple of days, which is not necessarily the worst thing. Now, looking at, you know, for looking at silver in the stocks, like they're only, they've only pulled back a little bit. So it doesn't look like they're going to fill the gap. However, if you look at gold, I mean, that's come back quite a ways. I think it's, you know, I think on stock charts, maybe the open of the gap is around 1908. Gold's trading at 1920 right now. So over the next couple days, I mean, we want to see just more strength, more buying come in. And that would really solidify that these are breakaway gaps. If these gaps are going to fill, I think it would happen tomorrow or the next day. I mean, otherwise, they're not going to fill and they're breakaway gaps. And that's super bullish for the market. Yeah, Jordan, it'd be better if they didn't fill. But just where gold is hovering right now at 1920, I mean, that's a significant level because last year, one of the peaks was around 19, 19 and some change, almost 1920. And if people think back to 2011, the previous all time high was at 1921. A lot of people saw that as potential resistance that gold needed to get through. It definitely got through it and it's kind of holding in this level now. So would you be constructive on gold if it was able to maintain this 1920, 1921 level to close the week? Absolutely. I mean, the, the weekly close is really important. And it's important because, you know, we mentioned, OK, we got I've been saying close the month above 1900. We did it by a nose hair, which, you know, 19 points, 1900.7, which doesn't really count, in my opinion. And so after Monday in the close of the month, my thinking was, OK, well, we need to see a weekly close now. So that's absolutely what we want to see. And yes, 1920, given the significance that you pointed out, I would like to see gold close above 1920 to end the week. You know, if it clo- if it closes at 1910, I'd have to see how the rest of the sector is performing. But it's a little unusual right now, given the monthly closes on a Monday. So we are going to have to wait a few more days to see if we get real confirmation, because gold could fill this gap and come down to 1880, and then at that point, maybe it doesn't close the month above 1900. So there's still a lot of potential for gold to you know to move up or down. You know, and I know I know people don't want to hear that. They expect you to know. But the real key for me is that gold and the rest of the sector, that these gaps hold this week. And if they do hold, I mean, we should see more strength coming. And hence, if you tell me 
these gaps are going to hold. I mean, that's really, really bullish for the sector, which should have some more short-term upside, if that's the case. Hey, anytime gaps to the upside hold, that is positive. But boy, oh boy, we do see them get filled a lot. Jordan, just a quick question. When it comes to that action on March 1st, just yesterday, when gold popped by 40, around 40 plus dollars, I did hear some comments that, oh, that was because gold closed above 1900. And that drew in some more investors because of that monthly close, even though it was 1970 cents. Do you put any credence in that argument as to why gold got a bump on Tuesday? Um, not necessarily, because I think it had last June, it closed above 1900 and then it, it took a big dump immediately the next day. Immediately dumped, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. I mean, 70 cents was the difference between a $40 upside move and not doing anything. I don't know. I think it's a little presumptuous, but we'll see. I mean, if you were saying that all gaps really eventually fill, but breakaway gaps do not fill. So my expectation and my hope is that these gaps do not fill. I mean, given what I said in the first answer about how we close at the high of the day, you know, we had huge strength after the, the market gapped up at the open. These gaps should not fill. Now, if they do end up filling in the next couple of days, it's not the end of the world. We're still in a re really good shape here this year for precious metals. Well, and Jordan, you'd also mentioned the strength of silver and the miners. I mean, the miners yesterday, especially the producers, had a really good day. The juniors maybe didn't get the bid some were hoping for, but that's always the way things start is they start with not just the larger producers, but the ETFs did well, most of them up four to five percent. And we also saw the royalty companies doing well. And then silver has held above 25. That was a key resistance level. And so far, it's been able to hold above that. Does that give you a little bit more encouragement to happen in tandem with that big move up in gold yesterday? Yes, I think the strength in silver and the gold stocks, you know, the Huey, GDX, GDXJ, et cetera, that was also very significant about yesterday because you could have a scenario where gold's up, you know, 20 or $30, but silver barely does anything. The miners barely do anything. And that would be the type of action where you would think, okay, these gaps are going to fill, but it was broad based. It was across the board, and that's what you want to see in a real bull move. You know, you see gold go up, but you see silver and the stocks outperform. And so that's exactly what happened. And the only chart today I have an issue with is gold just giving back, you know, more than half of uh, the gains from yesterday. If we're looking at silver and the stocks, they've only given back, I mean, they've given back much less than that. So, I mean, that's potentially another signal that these gaps won't fill but you know you never know what the sector there's a lot of false moves moves all over the place day to day and that's why weekly and monthly closes are really important so the the weekly close will tell the tale i mean if we see gold do not fill these gaps and it closes the week above 1920 that to me is going to be a really good sign well, and to your point about the monthly charts, too, remember, we are having this pop early on in the month. And I think everybody following gold knows how regularly those early monthly pops get sold off. Not saying that it'll happen this time, but we have seen that in the past. Jordan, when we look at that long term monthly chart for gold, we've heard so much about this cup and handle formation, this decade plus long cup and handle formation. Looks like we're on the upward trend of this handle formation has a lot of people encouraged rightfully so it does at least look like it has that shape now this upward trend of the handle is coming quite steeply considering it took over 16 months for the handle to bottom what's your takeaway from the potential cup and handle formation here this is a super bullish pattern you know we're, we're assessing whether gold's going to push higher immediately, fill the gap, or if it's going to be another false move. But in either scenario, the long-term prognosis, this is a super bullish pattern. I don't think people realize how bullish this pattern is. And I may have mentioned it before, but when you go back in history and you look at major markets for cup and handle patterns, and also there's some historical ones in gold, although they don't quite fit the textbook, but I mean, they're, they're close enough for the study. But looking at those patterns, looking at the historical ones, I mean, there's one in the Hang Seng, think of the 70s and 80s, and you have one in U.S. stocks in the 30s and 40s. And the breakouts in these historical patterns, they gave way to huge moves higher over more than just a couple of years. So, you know, the couple year outlook here, I mean, historically, 
gold, when it makes very, very strong moves, it can double in a two-year period. And this is a super bullish pattern. So put that together. I would not be surprised to see gold you know, trading at 3500 or even 4000 before 2025. You know, assuming that this year we're going to make a new all-time high and that, you know, in the last month or two, that was the low, we're starting to move up. So this is a super bullish pattern and it's going to give rise to a bull move just beyond the next next couple of years where gold's going to get to 3000 4000 i mean it's going to trade beyond that after the next couple of years given i mean the macro factors historical valuations all that stuff but that's what happens with these patterns that we see historically in major markets the market it easily hits the measured upside target which is 3000 for gold then it hits the log target you know, soon after that. And then after that, it tends to continue to rise. So this is the breakout of this pattern, if we're using a bird's eye view. I mean, this is the start of what's going to be a very prosperous period for precious metals investors, not just over the next couple of years, but it's also going to be the case for the next five years, 10 years, and probably more than that. Well, Jordan, that is a very bullish outlook on the longer term. And I would agree that the cup and handle pattern is a very bullish pattern, especially over such a long period of time. So that should give something for the gold bulls and precious metals investors to hang their hat on. We've talked short term on these daily candles. We've talked long term. Just real quick on the medium term, since we're going into this period where Powell's talking today and he's talking tomorrow, and we're getting very close to if the Fed's going to start their rate hikes. Since we're coming in without that sell-off that we normally see beforehand, is it possible that we already saw the sell-off, but it just happened kind of towards the end of last year and people have front-run this? Or are we at risk in the medium term of starting this rate-hiking cycle and having it hit the precious metals? Well, it's interesting because I was thinking if we're looking at the history that I like to look at and the Fed is so far behind the curve, I mean, that big decline we got at the beginning of 2021 and we made that low in uh, March or April there, that should have been the low when the Fed started hiking rates. That's how far behind the curve they are. And then, you know, gold consolidating, that was the, the rest of the rate hiking cycle. And, you know, now gold has moved up in the last several weeks because the market should be anticipating that they're the end of their cycle. And, and that's exactly what's happened. Because if you look at coming into March, as of like two or three weeks ago, the market had priced in the equivalent of 1.8 rate hikes. As of yesterday, the market had priced in 0.95 rate hikes. I mean, the Fed will still hike rates, but that's how much has come off as far as the market's expectation. And that's why gold, it's one of the reasons why gold has had this you know, really good move over the last couple of weeks. I mean, it's not just the war in Ukraine. So, you know, but with, with respect to your second question, and, you know, could the, the Fed's going to start hiking? Will that cause a decline? I mean, I guess it's possible. I'm, I'm looking at a weekly chart right now. And I mean, there, the, there is resistance. I mean, there is some weekly resistance at 1950, 1960. So, I mean, if we trade up to that level over the next couple of weeks and things get extended from a sentiment standpoint, the COT all of that. And, and maybe we just need a correction because if you look at the stocks, you know, they've had a really good move in the last month. So if that continues for the next couple of weeks, they could come to a point where a, a pullback would be a reasonable expectation. So, yeah, I mean, it's you'd have to ask me right before the meeting. I mean, because we could, you know, if the market's going to trade up, if gold's trading at 1960 and in that area, I'd say, yeah, it's possible that we could get a you know pullback based on this uh, the Fed hiking. But if we're you know, trading around 1900 or even correct and we're in the upper 1800s, you know, I would say, no, we don't necessarily have to have a pullback when they hike. So it's lit literally, you know, we'll have to revisit this again in two weeks as we do the interview, you know, 30 minutes before we get the Fed decision. And then we can assess, you know, where the technicals and sentiment are at that point. All right. Well, either way, look, February, very good month for gold actually closed up about 5% and at its peak, that spike right before the end of the month was up over 10% just for the month. So definitely some encouraging signs. And yes, we do still have that rate hike coming and we don't know what's going to happen, how the market's going to trade on the back of that. But one thing seems to be for sure in these markets that we are getting a lot of swing trades. There is not necessarily a straight line. There never is, but 
this, uh, I, in a way, stair step pattern higher for gold, at least right now, is encouraging. But again, let's see where the week closes, where the month closes. But overall, hey, sounds encouraging for the gold bugs out there. Jordan, thank you, as always, for your time, buddy. We'll chat next week. Have a great rest of your week.